Hello, and welcome back to Gen Chem with Dr. J. I'm Dr. Janita Pritchett, and on this channel, we cover all things related to gen chemistry. In this video, we'll be covering chemical equations, and we'll learn how to balance them. Let's get started. So chemical equations are just a shorthand way of describing what the reaction is. And so we can learn a lot of valuable information just by reading what the chemical equation is providing to us. And so it provides information about what is considered to be a reactant or the starting material versus the product or the end material. There's also indications about what the state of the material is. Is it solid, liquid, gas, or something we call aqueous that we'll learn about in a few slides. It also helps us to figure out the relative number amount, amount of reactant or product that is required for the reaction to occur. And most importantly, we can use information from the chemical equation to help predict what amount of material may be produced as we are creating these new substances. And so if we look at an example here where it says methane gas burns to produce carbon dioxide gas and gas, gaseous water, um, when something is burning with gas or combusting, we say that it's just O2 in this class. And so we would look at it and see um, something like this. So if we were to read this equation, this would read as one molecule of CH4 gas combined with one molecule of O2 to make one molecule of CO2 gas and one molecule of H2O. Now, while that reads correct, there's an assumption that's being made, right? Um, if you notice and count how many hydrogen atoms you see on the product side, and when I'm saying product, I mean the end material, versus when I say reactant, I mean starting material. So if you look at how many hydrogens are on both sides of the equation, you can see there's a disparity. You have four hydrogens on the reactant side versus two on the product side. And check the oxygens out. We went from having two to miraculously now having three. So we're not creating some magic atom out of nowhere we have to actually go through and account for how many of each of these molecules is present. And we do that process through the balancing of equations. And so we can see in this case, we're not observing the law of conservation of mass. And so we have to um, get rid of this assumption that we're make, making that everything is combining in this one-to-one -one ratio, okay? And so in fact, not everything combines in one-to-one -one ratios. And so we're gonna be adjusting the position that exists preceding the different compounds or elements that are shown with whole numbers to allow for making sure that we maintain this law of conservation of mass. And so in a balanced equation, we're gonna adjust the coefficient position by placing whole numbers on in front of these molecules or elements that are present to adjust the total number of atoms that are found on both sides of the equation. When we're done with balancing the equation, we should see equal numbers of atoms for all the elements on both sides of the arrow. And so now, if we were to place a two in the position of before oxygen and two before the water molecules, that now allows us to maintain this law of conservation of mass. We've adjusted the total number of oxygens that are present in the total number of hydrogens by incorporating the fact that there's multiple uh, of these compounds that are involved in this reaction. So rather than being a one-to-one -one ratio, we now have this one molecule of CH4 to two of oxygen is going to create one CO2 and two waters. And so that does balance out. So if we look at the chemical equation that we just were uh, using in the previous example, there's a lot of information we can garnish from it. And so again, this side is our reactants. So anytime we're saying reactant, we're talking about that starting material. This side is our products, okay? The letters that are found in these parentheses here, well, that's what's telling us our state of matter. Is it solid, liquid, or gas? And we're gonna learn how to predict that in future chapters. And then the, the whole number that's preceding or coming before the element or the compound that's our coefficient. And that's telling us how many of these molecules are being used in this reaction. Remember, if you don't put a whole number in there and just leave it blank, that means that there's one of that molecule, not zero. And so balancing the equations means that there are equal number of atoms on each side of the reactant um, after we're done. And to figure that out, to check ourselves, we're simply multiplying that coefficient position by any subscript that we see uh, present in the molecule. 
And so for carbon, we see there's one as the coefficient, one as the subscript. So we have one carbon on the reactant side, four hydrogens and four oxygens. And that four here is coming from two times two. And on the product side, we have one carbon, we have uh, four hydrogens, two times two. And then our oxygens are two times one plus two is where we're getting this total of four. Okay, so we're gonna be tracking ourselves. Some other symbols that you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to as you look at these chemical equations are shown for you here. So if we're dealing with gas, liquid, or solid materials, they would be designated as with a G, L, or S respectively. And then you, you're gonna also start seeing in upcoming chapters this AQ designation. So AQ means aqueous, and that means that that substance has been dissolved in water. So if you have something like NaCl with a S after it versus NaCl with AQ after it, NaCl solid means I'm dealing with the solid material, the actual crystalline material. NaCl aqueous means that that salt has now been dilute, dissolved, excuse me, in water, and we've created a solution of this sodium chloride material, okay? Um, other things that we uh, may use um, are some typical energy symbols, and so the triangle you may see a lot through this class, and that just means heat um, is either required or, or given off throughout the reaction. Uh, you may see the symbol to calculate, be able to figure out how much light given off, um, shock and electrical um, or mechanical electrical, we won't really see too much in this, this chapter. So let's try some examples. When aluminum metal reacts with air, it produces a white powdery compound aluminum oxide. So from that sentence, you should be able to develop what the chemical equation is. Remember, we learned how to name uh, compounds back in chapter three. So if you don't remember that, go back and check that video. But when we look at this sentence here, we can tra uh, translate that into chemical equation. So it says when aluminum metal, so aluminum metal is a solid, reacts with air. So air in this class will be just simply oxygen. It produces a white powdery compound known as aluminum oxide. So aluminum oxide, we know that aluminum has that positive three charge. Oxide means oxygen with a negative two. We cross down and that's where Al2O3 has come from, okay? Now, after we have done so, we then need to go through and balance our equation. Remember, we're putting this two here with oxygen because it's a diatomic, it's one of your seven. Now, if we list under the arrow our options, we have aluminum, which is, we start with one on the reactant side and we have two on the product and oxygen, we see we have two on the reactant side versus three on the product. Well, now we wanna start going through and adjusting those coefficient positions. So a lot of students initially would say, let's put a two here. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I see why you would do that. In fact, it, it, it satisfies our aluminum. But the big thing I'm gonna remind you when you're doing these balancing equations is to have pencils because just cause you write a number down doesn't mean you won't end up erasing it in the future. So. Although it's adjusted our aluminums, notice it did not do anything for our oxygens. And on the product side, this is the only place we can get oxygen. So we have to adjust this aluminum oxide number, the, the coefficient there, um, by some manner in order to satisfy oxygen, which means subsequently we'll also be changing the aluminum number. Now, as you're trying to figure out what coefficient goes there, you're looking for a common multiple between the two sides of the reaction. So I see two on my reactant side, three on my product side. So I would anticipate I'm trying to get six as a, as a common multiple. And so to get six oxygens on the product side, I would need to put a two there in front of the aluminum oxide, which now gives me two times three, gives me six oxygens. And so to get six on the reactant side, I could put a three there, which would give me six. But notice what else did that two change when we added it to aluminum oxide? it also changed the aluminum. We no longer have two. We now have four, which means to now satisfy this, I need to put a four in that coefficient position. Here we go, okay? And then you can always check yourself. If you don't see them balanced on both sides, you know that something is not done completely. Let's try another example. Here it says acetic acid reacts with the metal aluminum to make aqueous aluminum acetate and gaseous hydrogen. So acids are always aqueous. So we're gonna learn about acids later in chapter four. 
Um, but so acetic acid, we have the acetate ion with hydrogen. Aluminum metal would be aluminum solid and it's producing aluminum acetate. Again, this three is here because of the subscript. This, the charge from aluminum creates that subscript. And this two is here because hydrogen is a diatomic element when it's by itself. Now, when you're doing the balancing here, I suggest that you keep, when we have polyatomic ions present, count the polyatomic ion, that unit as a whole, count it as one thing. That'll make your balancing life so much easier um, rather than counting the carbon, the hydrogen and the oxygen independently. And also note that the hydrogen that's here or here is different when we're counting than what's there, okay? So on our reactant side, we have one aluminum, on the product side, we also have one. On the reactant side, I have one hydrogen. On the product side, I would have two. On the reactant side, I have one acetate. And on the product side, I have three, okay? So now we can decide, well, where do we wanna focus? So many may say, let's focus on hydrogen, okay? And nothing wrong with that. So to balance the hydrogen, just the hydrogen by itself, and a lot of you all would say, let's put a two here, which is normal, normal to think. But notice it does create two, but now it also creates two of our acetates. And now if we check in with what we need to, to satisfy our acetate number, so a red light should be going off and say, hey, you know, this two can't be the end all be all because that's not gonna give me the three that I need. And so really what you now wanna do is look for that common multiple between these two, which would be six. And so how can we get six on both sides? Well, that means I need to put a six here. And what that would do would also cause a six on the reactant side for my hydrogens. Now on our product side to get six for the acetates, I could put a two here. So that's two times three gives me my six. So that checks out. Notice what else does that affect? Our aluminum, we now have two. And the hydrogen to get the six, we need to put a three here. Three times two will give us six. So that checks out. And then the last thing we need to do is put a two in front of the aluminum to balance that out. Okay. There's a bunch more that you can work out for you shown here. So I definitely encourage you all to go through these, try some balancing and uh, try practicing that idea of listing the elements under the arrow and then assigning the number of atoms that you start with on both sides and then balancing them out. I hope this video helped you in learning how to do what chemical equations are and how to balance them. Make sure you guys like, comment and subscribe and let me know what kind of content you wanna see. I'll see you guys in the next video. Talk to you later, bye-bye.